Welcome to Gentle Yoga. I'm Cindy. Nice to have you. As a reminder, we're going to use a strap today or a scarf, something that you can use to support yourself in some of the reclined stretches, a blanket for under your hips or under your head, and possibly a bolster, or you can use a blanket or a pillow, anything handy in your environment for under your knees at the end when we recline. And we're gonna begin with the end in mind and we're gonna begin by reclining. So I invite you to lie on your back, find a comfortable position. We'll be doing a guided relaxation exercise. So lying on your back in a comfortable position, let your arms stretch your head just to begin feeling into the length of your body, wiggling your fingers and toes. And let's engage some circulation in our low back as we bend our knees into our chest. maybe a little gentle rocking from side to side or whatever feels good. You can even take your hands to your knees and create a little circle around that sacrum as you rock from side to side and then reverse direction. And release your feet to the floor. You can keep the knees bent if that's more comfortable for you. Or go ahead and once again, extend your legs and we'll turn the feet out slightly externally rotating the hips so the feet are turned out. And let's do the same with the shoulders. Turn the shoulders out, turn the palms up. Let's see if you can imagine yourself melting into the earth, melting in to the support beneath you. Feel the sensation of sinking and being received by the support below you. You might even start to notice the breath deepening as all your awareness comes internally into the belly. See if you can feel that expansion in the belly as you breathe in. Let the belly rise. And as you breathe out, feel it sinking back towards the earth. Wiggle our fingers and toes and bring some movement to the hands and feet, calling our awareness into the limbs. Let's roll through the wrists and the ankles in any way that feels like it's creating a little more freedom and circulation in these joints. Draw the arms over the head, point the toes, reach the fingers away from the toes, flex the wrists and the ankles and point fingers and toes, flexing and pointing. You're welcome to keep your eyes closed for this if that helps you bring your focus and attention to the sensation or keep them open to bring a little light in to the body. And then once again, drawing the knees into the chest slowly the slower we move, the more we'll feel. So we want to move slowly. Mm -hmm. 
just hugging those knees into the chest. If you want a little bit more, you can lift your head, come up a little bit with the head, nose towards the knees and feel that stretch move up the spine. Relax those shoulders, let the upper body lower and let's hug the knees into the chest, creating little circles counterclockwise. Good, and then we'll go clockwise. Rocking around that sacrum. And then this time, as we go clockwise, let's let the lower body roll over to the right side. Draw the arms out across in T-shape, across the heart. And if it feels good, take your gaze over your left arm, breathing and relaxing those shoulders. Take your attention to your spine. Just take your awareness internally and see that spine in a twist. Visually see the muscles and the joints working to support the posture, to honor and allow the movement that seeks to flow along the spine. Again, throughout the class, you can keep your eyes open or closed. Depending on what feels appropriate. Remember the key here is what we were speaking about in the beginning is to learn to listen with the body. Sometimes it's easier to do that with the eyes closed. Go ahead and take our top leg, which would be the left leg. Bring the knee up into the chest a little higher. Good, and if it's okay to press through the heel of that leg, pushing out so the leg is straightened. Good, and then bend the knee. Pull the knee up to the chest and then press out through the heel of the foot. Bend the knee, pull back one more time, push. Good. And then bring the knees into a cross position as you untwist the spine, your left knee crossing over your right and hugging both knees into the chest with the knees crossed. You might be able to use your strap here, wrap around the knees if you need that support. For those that want a little more, take your hands to your feet and draw those heels in towards the glutes. Every time we pause, it's an opportunity to bring our attention more deeply into the listening body and the breath. And so we'll uncross the knees slightly, just enough to let the outside of the left ankle rest on top of the right thigh. Good. And from here, let's draw the knee into the chest and release just a couple of times to warm up the left hip. And make sure you feel like you have enough support under your head. And on this one, we're going to hold the stretch. This is often called a recline pigeon pose. If you want a little more, you can reach your hands through Clasp the fingers underneath the right thigh. Holding that stretch, bringing our attention into wherever we feel the most sensation. For some of us, it'll be the left hip. For others, it might be the shoulders or the upper back or the knee. Let's flex that left foot. Just 
Continue to breathe deeply here, meeting the sensation with the breath. And we'll release that stretch. Good. Go ahead and uncross the legs, drop both knees into the chest. Good. For a little bit more, tuck chin to the sternum and rounding up. And then let the upper body relax back into the floor or the mat if you're using a mat. Good. We'll start with clockwise circles this time, rocking around the back of the sacrum. Think of that pelvic bowl, like the face of a clock going around, face of a clock, and then reversing that circular motion May even, you might even want to connect the breath to the movement. So inhale on the way up, exhale on the way down. Inhale up, and this, as we exhale down, we'll let the lower body recline over into the left side, shifting our gaze to Placing our attention on the spine and the twist. Tuning into the subtle energy traveling along the spine. Maybe even noticing a little internal massage happening. Go ahead and draw that right knee into the chest and then press out through the right heel, straightening the leg. Bend the knee, drop to the chest, almost like you're bicycling with one leg here. Push through the heel. Good, draw back. Use your breath, exhale, flex and push through the heel. Inhale, knee to the chest, last one. Exhale, press and hold. Let your right knee rest atop of your left knee as you unwind that spine to neutral and scoop those knees into the chest. This time with the knees crossed, place the hands where it's comfortable, where you're not straining in the shoulders. If you want a little more, you can reach down, take the ankles pull a little deeper into the stretch and if you want more still you can lift that upper body as we did before Continue to bring our attention to the shoulders and take some of that tension off the shoulders where we tend to carry some extra stress. And we'll slide the knees apart enough to rest the outside of the right ankle on top of the left thigh. And move into the stretch here as we relax in and out for a couple repetitions. Exhaling, draw the knee in. Inhaling, releasing. Two more like that. Good, we're actually engaging some core strength by doing this. And the slower we move, the deeper we recruit our strength from within. Now bringing the hands through, threading the arms through and into fingers interlaced underneath the left thigh. Flex that right foot. Our 
bringing our attention to the sensation. We'll breathe into the part of our body who is speaking most clearly through sensation. Breathe with the sensation. We create more space, more awareness. This part of our body where our attention goes, energy flows, giving our attention to these tighter spaces to create more space. But uncross those legs and draw both knees to the chest once again. Feel a nice stretch in the low back. And let's extend the legs straight up, flexing and pointing, flexing and pointing. So we're pumping the calf muscles which helps to return the blood flow into the pelvic bowl and back up to the heart. Good. You can add a little bit more support there by going into bridge. So our feet will come to the floor hip width apart. We'll rest our arms to our side and just start tilting that pelvis back and forth, stimulating some movement in that pelvic bowl calves, pelvis, and the heart are the three pumps of the body. We're going to reverse the effects of gravity by now lifting the hips up, taking the palms to the floor and letting the blood flow from the pelvis spill back into the heart so the heart can recirculate that blood. Good, getting a fresh supply of oxygenated blood into the muscles, to the organs. Now simultaneously add, release your mind to the mat, one vertebrae at a time. Let your arms begin to rise up, moving in the opposite direction of the spine as it lowers to the floor. Imagine creating a little more length in the spine. And stretching out those legs once again. Let's rotate through the ankles and the wrists. Reverse direction. Good, and scoop the knees into the chest one more time. Bring it all together in a nice rounded spine, tucking the chin to the chest. And we'll come up to seat it. So you can release your feet to the floor and roll onto your side or seated. That's a transition that works for you or find one that works for you. And we'll come to a simple cross-legged position to begin with. Have your strap and your blanket handy. And draw the arms overhead. In a cross-legged position, we're drawing the arms overhead and imagining energy traveling up the spine. But as our hands come together in prayer position, we'll imagine pulling a thread of golden light down into the spine, bringing it to the heart. We're hinging forward from the hips just enough to feel a little stretch in the back, but keeping our sits bones on the mat. Now pull the hands back, separate the palms, push the elbows back, and rotate the wrist, push the arms back. And feeling a nice stretch across the top of the shoulders. Okay, we'll take our right hand to the floor, lift our left arm, reach up, and exhale into a side bend. Rotate the palm towards me, press the shoulder towards the back wall, and then looking backwards if that's safe for your neck. Take this hand and rest it to the opposite knee. Bring the spine back up into vertical alignment and let's bring the right arm up and over to the opposite side. Again, rotate your palm towards me. Push the shoulder back and turn and look up. If that's not safe or comfortable for your neck, you can gaze downward or at me.
Now using your core strength to do your lifting, rise up. Try not to use the arm to do the lifting, but let your oblique strength do the lifting and then bringing that right hand over to the left knee. You're gonna hinge forward, bending at the elbows. If you can keep your hands on the knees, great. And we're hinging forward, letting the elbows come towards the floor. You can use your blanket or your bolster or whatever you have handy if you need a little extra padding to bring those elbows down and fold forward, getting a nice stretch across the upper back. And then for those who want to, go ahead, extend the arms forward and stretch a little deeper into this forward fold. Engaging those deep breaths. Imagine feeling an expansion in the ribs as you breathe in, stretching the intercostal muscles and feeling a nice little lift from the navel into the spine as you exhale to engage that core, anchoring the breath into the body deeply. We'll use that core strength as we rise up on an inhale, stacking the spine one vertebrae at a time. And let the hands find the knees once again, leaning back, roll the shoulders back, lift the heart. Good, so the sternum is rising up. We're not collapsing in. The shoulders are rolling back, sternum's lifting as we lean back into the sits bones. If you'd like to challenge your core, go ahead and lift the legs, bring the knees and feet together, or keep the feet on the floor. You're still getting a challenge for the core either way. Those that want to go into boat, keep the knees bent, bring the arms to the side. Rotate now the ankles, hold on to those knees, reversing direction. Good, and we'll cross the legs again, the opposite order. Good. Drawing the breath in, reach the arms overhead. Palms together, draw the energy down into the heart. Visually see a golden thread of light pulling from heaven, energy down to the earth. Use your imagination, fill your body with these special qualities of light. Inch forward, get that stretch in the back, keep those sits bones engaged. It's not about how far you fold forward, but how rooted are you? So we now pull the hands back, pressing back. Palms are facing upward. Good. Tipping the chin towards the sternum, stretching the back of the neck. And then bring the spine upward. Take the left hand to support, right arm comes up. And we reach into our side bend. Rotate the palm towards me, push the shoulder back, roll back so the shoulders are stacked. Right now, my right shoulder is a little forward ahead of my left. I want to roll that right shoulder back so that they're in a nice equal plane to each other. Good, and then relaxing down. Remember the movements are slow as we come from one posture to the next. We use the transition to feel into the space between the postures, between the stretches, going for the energy, the yin aspect of our practice. Now rotate the palm, shoulder back, and do what feels right for you with your neck. If you're gazing upward or downward, it's not important as long as it feels safe for you. You still feel rooted in your core here, even though your 
leaning your body weight to one side, your core is anchoring you into the earth. Relaxing the upper body. Come out of the side bend as you bring your spine back to neutral. Cross the arms. And if you can keep your hands on your knees, that's good. Bend the elbows and bring the elbows towards the knees. If that's not possible for you, which it isn't for all of us, bring your hands a little closer in and let your elbows rest at the inside corners of the knees and bend forward and just feel into the length of the back. See if you can flatten the back a little here rather than rounding. Good, and from here, if you want more, go ahead and place your hands out in front to support the weight of the torso and then slide gently into the version of this forward fold that you want. We had a couple requests for low back and hips and we're getting both here and now. So give your attention to these areas of the body not in a way to force them into something they're not ready for, but to honor the way that they support us in moving and giving them space to breathe and to communicate. Using that core strength, engage our center and our anchor into the earth as we rise up. Do so slowly, feeling the support, not only of the earth below us, but that core strength. Now uncross the legs once again. And this time extend the legs forward reach the arms up overhead and here's a good place for your strap if you're using a strap or a scarf today. Let's take the strap if we're using one into the hands shoulder width apart and bring it overhead. Sitting up tall in staff pose the feet are flexed. Good. Now lean back just a little bit to engage the core and as you reach up reach a little taller in the spine Soften the shoulders, hinge from the hips, and if you can wrap that strap around the feet, and then draw the hands back enough to bend the elbows and pull the elbows back towards the rib cage as you flatten forward. Great, you're going to feel this in the hamstrings, so we're going to breathe right into where we're feeling it the most. And then come up. On an inhale, just giving the body a little space and re-entering on the exhale. Really honoring the limitation that we're challenging. Giving it space and breath, being a good listener. We find the edges and coax them to expand just a little bit. many times as you want you can inhale and come up and exhale and come forward be here for four more breaths soften the shoulders catching myself gripping in the shoulders I'm going to continually remind ourselves to not Compensate unnecessarily, meaning using up our body's energy to hold tension where it's not necessary. We want to relax that tension and let energy flow. Use that energy where we need it the most. Last breath here. These are nice, slow, long breaths, as you can tell. Good, and from here, draw your hands up the front of the legs. Good, 
it. Keep the hands on the strap if you're using a strap. If not, imagine that you are. And let's pull as we lean back. You can bend your knees to support your low back. Pull up and over the head. And exhale forward. Adding a little movement here in a core challenge. We're trying to keep our legs on the mat. Engaging the core and trying to relax the shoulders as we row. Holding tension on that strap if we're holding a strap or imagining if we aren't. One more in this direction, we're bringing it up over the head. And then separate the arms a little wider and bring the arms back behind the head, stretching the chest. The elbows can be bent here. And really again, work with your level of flexibility. And then we'll press up. Good, wrapping back into our shoulder width apart, pulling down the front, stretching down the front of the legs, reaching up, roll back. So we're engaging the core enough, roll down. Again, bending the knees to support the back if you need that support. We have one more and we're going to go really slow here. Challenge yourself to slow down. Challenge yourself to feel. A little shaky, maybe. <laughs> All the way up. Feel a little reach here. You're just scooping out the navel, reaching forward. You're pulling the navel back towards the spine. Good. And then take the arms back out as far as you can and release the strap. Good, bring the knees into the chest. We'll go ahead and straddle out the legs. Find a comfortable way to do that. You might want a little extra cushion under your seat for some of us, that's good. We'll draw the breath in as we reach the arms overhead. Interlace the fingers and push downward through the heels of the hands and then forward, stretching the fingers, stretching out the upper back. Flex those feet to engage the back of the legs. Draw the arms up over the head. Good, now let's turn to look at our left leg as we turn and rotate at the waist. Draw your right hand down to the inside of your right leg with the palm up. Now slide the palm towards the foot Resting the elbow into the inside of the knee as we take our left arm towards the foot. Side bend, same thing now. We press the palm forward, roll the shoulder back. And look where it feels comfortable for your neck. Side bends are excellent for toning the internal organ. So as we're leaning towards that right side, we're opening the left side. So we have our spleen on the left side, related to digestion, opening and stretching the spaciousness there. Simultaneously, we have our liver on the right side, which is getting a little bit of a squeeze, a little internal massage and compression. Rise up on an inhale. And now turn towards the right leg. Inhale, lift the arms up. Interlace the fingers, push up through the heels of the hands and hinge forward again. Use your strap if you'd like. Hinging forward over that leg. Doesn't have to be deep enough to engage the leg, keeping both sit bones on the mat. It's easy to want to lift here. Let's keep rolling back into the left hip as we extend across the right leg. And you can feel that breath like a wave as you inhale, let it fill the upper back and feel a little buoyancy there as you slightly rise up and slightly sink as you exhale. Wave of the breath, massaging the body. A 
And using our core awareness to engage the strength at our center as we rise up. Coming back to the center. Draw the arms overhead, inhale. Good. Bring the hands down, prayer position. Interlace the fingers at the heart. Push down, stretching out the fingers, round the back, but scooping the navel. Cat stretch, rounding the back, and then rising up, inhale. Again, turn towards the right leg. This time, taking side bend will release the left arm we bring the arm to the inside of the leg to tuck the shoulder under so our top shoulder can come into a nice stack position turn the palm press as though you're pressing into an imaginary wall in front of you and then roll the shoulder back as if you're rolling into a wall behind you imagine between two pieces of glass press Good. So here we are opening the right side of the body, giving the liver a little bit more space to function and breathe. And pressing the spleen side. Rising up on an inhale. Coming out of the side bend. And then we'll turn towards the left leg. Bring the hands together, fingers interlaced. Bring the arms up. Hinge forward, exhale, and fold. So use that strap if you like. And if being in straddle position is too much for that, you can always tuck the foot of the opposite leg in to reach into this forward fold. You lengthen the spine and see if we can bring our chest to the center of the thigh for this. Lengthening out the back of the neck, tucking that chin slightly back towards the sternum. Imagine the crown of the head reaching for the toes. Couple more breaths here again, engaging with that wave, the internal wave as the breath enters and leaves the body. Imagine the space that it's occupying and the circulation it's creating will rise up again, inhaling. Nice and slow as you come up. Everything is focused right on the core as we do these movements get it from here we'll bring the knee into the chest and then let it fold forward we'll come into what's called z seat both knees bent one foot resting atop of the opposite thigh from here we'll take the right arm onto the floor to rest into a little bit to support the weight and we want to take the weight off the left hip as we bring that left hand to the knee we're going to do a little movement here for the hip as we inhale we're going to open up the gate the, right here hold the claw and turn and look back and then as we exhale let the knee fold back towards the floor and then add a little twist as we look over the right shoulder good and inhale opening the claw look back external rotation of that left hip and then an internal rotation of the hips. We're bringing some circulation into the hip and we're encouraging the flow of blood and energy from the legs into the pelvis. One more time. Inhale to open and mobilize the chi, the blood. Exhale to stabilize. Good, now take the leg and extend it straight. And then from here, we'll bring up into a side bend. Now, you can stay on your hip for this, or you can rise up onto the knee if that's comfortable for you, reaching across to a nice side bend. That's the way. And now, scooping under for a little twist for those that want it. 
and inhale. Come out of the twist again, nice and slow, drawing a big circle around the body. Let the arm float back, and then slowly, if you were up on your knee, come back to seated, and we're reaching right into a forward fold here. Strap can come in if you need a strap. Exhale, keep the foot flexed. Starting to feel more circulation and openness in the hips and low back as we move deeper into the practice. So we want to give our attention to what we want to create. So even if you're not feeling more freedom in certain parts of your body that you know you need it, imagine that you are and what that would feel like body some direction. Good, and from here we'll slide up into a seated position. Let the heel slide in, take the arms and scoop under the knee, reach for the opposite elbow. Take the opposite elbow with the hands and as you sit up tall and lean back, we're going to lift that leg with us. So we're seated. We're moving through the ankle, rotating one, two, three, and reversing that one, two, good, nice and slow, three, good, and then the whole lower leg, or the knee, one, two, that's three in that direction, now we'll go the other way, one, Two, good, just let the ankle do what it wants to, it wants to do the rotating three, good. And now for the hip. So for most of us, we'll be just supporting under the knee and doing the hip movements, three in each direction. For those who have the flexibility to grab the knife edge of the foot and stir the leg, the head of the femur into the hip socket, you can do it this way. And reversing, one, two, Three, and then taking this foot into position for a seated twist. So the foot can come to the inside of the opposite knee, or if you have the flexibility, take it to the outside. And then move this foot out of the way so that we can bring the sits bones onto the mat, onto the floor. So if this hip is resting on this foot, my spine is already sort of crooked. When I move the foot out of the way and sit tall, my spine is already upright, and as I go into the twist, I want to rotate, hugging the knee to the chest with the opposite arm, and then use this hand to support as I press into the heel of the hand. I'm lifting the spine slightly, gazing backwards. And as I mentioned, please modify anything that's not feeling good today for you. Give freedom to do what's right for you. Come out of the twist and place the foot into the lap. So it could be for more flexible people, half lotus, or for less flexible, simple cross leg. And for even less flexible, you can straddle. So find what works for you today. And let's go ahead and reach back into a forward fold. Keep saying hello to these hips in different ways. Encourage another layer of flexibility to emerge, another layer of circulation, space and freedom, which brings healing. Circulation increases our body's capacity to heal itself, to restore, rejuvenate tired, stagnant parts. Draw 
drawing the breath in and using that core strength to begin pulling the spine back and stacking it one vertebrae at a time on top of itself. Let the hands hook the knees as you lean back, lift the lower body, bring the feet together, and then let the knees drop over to the left side, slide the right knee back behind the left foot. Right arm comes, excuse me, left arm comes around, support the weight, right hand on the right knee, and we go ahead and open the quad, look back, and exhale, close, look back. But notice a little twist in the spine and do what's comfortable for you. Use the range of motion that supports you. Bring your attention to that hip opening and closing like a gate. And imagine oiling the hinges, seeing more fluidity. Gates and hinges that are used every day do not collect rust. So we're really clearing out any rust that might be collecting in these hip gates. Now draw the knee back up, extend the leg, and find what works for you, either staying on the sit bone and going into the side bend, or if it's comfortable, come up onto the knee and get a little height and a little lift as you reach. And if it feels good to scoop under and twist the spine, you can add that piece. And then draw the breath in as you rise, reaching up and over. Let the arm reach behind the back to open the front of the shoulder. And slowly let your sit bones find the earth once again. Hinging forward, exhale. Flexing the foot. Rise up, inhale, lengthen the spine. And sink on the exhale. Breathing into the back. Feel the wave of breath. Moving through the body. Just like all waves, cleansing the shoreline. Use the core strength again to rise up nice and slow. Bend the knee, draw the knee to the chest, scoop the arms under, take the opposite elbow, lean back into the sits bone, and roll through the ankle. One, two, and three. Reverse. Pull lower leg. Bringing some heat and circulation into the joints. Good, and now the hip. Decide how you want to do that. You can just use one hand underneath the knee. Find what works for you. First direction. And then bring the foot into position for your version of seated cross leg. Bring the spine into position. Feels most upright. If you need a little help, blanket helps elevate the hips. Feels better. Draw the arms out to the side and feel this energy of the heart extending out the arms into the hands and then rotating, supporting the sternal stretch here in the IT band as you draw the knee towards the body. Feel a little bit more length, rising up from the outer hip, gaze over the shoulder. And then again, attention on the spine, noticing here the capacity have to rotate the body. This is a big piece of our freedom in our anatomy, these rotations of the spine. Very few joints are designed to rotate like this. Our 
spine can bend forward and back, side to side, and it can twist left to right. We've done all of those in our practice today. Come out of your twist. So we've prepared the spine to be a conduit for energy. Now come into your cross-leg position, either a half lotus or a simple cross-leg position. And draw the arms overhead. Imagine you're gathering energy again and then hinging forward from the hips. Good. Even just placing your hands on your knees and leaning forward can be enough for some of us. Work at what level supports you right now. And then maybe every breath, particularly each exhale, can take you a little further. And you can let your hands come to the floor in front of you. And then slowly extend a little further as your stretch deepens. Use your breath as a vehicle to travel deeper into the stretch. And then pausing and stopping where you find that red light or that yellow light. Waiting to proceed. Breath. And then rising up on an inhale, hands to the knees, lean back and uncross the legs. And find a forward fold where you're going to be able to stretch out fully. So extend your legs out in front of you where you have plenty of room behind you to recline back. And draw the arms overhead. We'll challenge our core here, tilting our pelvis back. Let the arms roll down, shoulder level. And then open the arms wide. Rise up. Let the arms come around, creating a ball in front, lean back. Now this can be done with the knees bent. Do two more like that. This time rotate to the right, extend the legs, lean back. Challenge the core, rise up, hug the knees to the chest, hug that ball front, lean back if it's appropriate for you, straighten the legs, extend the arms, twisting left, back to the center, knees to the chest, going to take the hands to the feet, and if it's safer, you extend the legs, hands can also rest on the ends, and we'll do our final forward fold here. In preparation for landing in a supine position for our final relaxation. Breathing through the nose and into the upper back. Feel the breath like a wave entering the body, cleansing the body as you exhale, releasing stagnant energy, tired energy. Breathing in the fertile energy of fresh new ideas, life force. Drawing in and up. Drawing down and in. Let your arms reach overhead. Stretch again as we began. Rotate through the wrists and through the ankles. One last hug, knees to chest. Give yourself a nice stretch into the back. And then releasing yourself into your resting position, taking either your bolster or your pillow for under your knees, your blanket under your head. Everybody needs a little something different. Honor your body. It really needs to feel like it can completely surrender here for a few moments. So peace. Let's bring our attention deep 
into the body, into the bones. Imagine the bones shimmering with purity and light. Imagine our pelvic bowl full of radiance, glowing with aliveness. Imagine our solar plexus full of our souls, genius and creativity. in our heart, opening like a flower, releasing nectar for the bees. Imagine the throat resounding words of kindness. Imagine the mind full of clarity and purpose. And imagine your life full of inspiration. Relax into the support. always present. Begin now, bring our attention back to our hands and feet. Create some movement in the fingers and toes and just be witness to the miracle that that is. Just the mere thinking, moving our fingers and toes instantly manifests. 
as sensation in the body, energy and motion moving into the wrist and the ankles, whatever way it feels surprising, not familiar, surprise the body. And then the knees and the elbows. The hips and the shoulders. And let your knees come to your chest. Give yourself a hug and just pause for a moment with appreciation for your body, yourself, for showing up, for participating, for listening with the body. And then roll into your side facing me. Just pause here for a moment in this most primal position, the fetal position. And know that you can return to this position at any time. It's a very comforting position for the body. The young part of us that lives in that old part of the brain often gets fearful and anxious feels at home in this position. Anytime you can bring the spine horizontal, you're decompressing the spine and creating more flow. You're welcome to re-invite yourself into a horizontal position anytime during the day you need that. For now, we'll come up to seat and bring our spine erect into a comfortable position to complete our practice together. Elevate the hips if that's comforting. Roll the shoulders back. And let's hinge forward and roll to one side and back, rounding the spine, roll to the other, reinvigorating that energy into movement, into a circular movement. Take up as much space as you can, and then reverse direction. Come to seated. Pause for a moment with the eyes closed. Just scan the body. Imagine you're inside the body looking Noticing what you notice, bring your hands together, rub them together. Call the energy that we've awakened in the body into the hands. And if there's a certain area of your body that needs a little extra love or attention right now, we're going to apply our hands to that area of our body. And let your hands gently cup the area of the body where you're directing that attention and imagine the body like a sponge receiving a transmission of energy that comes from the heart through the arms and into the hands penetrating the body being received as medicine internal medicine being circulated and distributed intelligently beyond our ability to comprehend from a logical place, but trusting. And allowing. And honoring. body's capacity to heal itself. Let your hands come together at prayer position with the heart. Just 
Then move the hands down towards the table. Separate the hands, palms up. Bring the elbows back. Pulling the elbows back, lift the sternum. Roll the wrists, the fingers, press the arms back as we did in the beginning. And let the arms come forward with the backs of the hands together. Pull the backs of the hands to the heart. And then open up and let the heart spill out. And the hands back to the heart. Bow forward, acknowledging yourself and everyone participating in this experience of life. Namaste. Namaste.